cours. And I will drop the Uber Eats link here first for the folks that are on. And then if more people join, I can drop it again so the new people can see it because I think new people can't see chat history. Sounds good. I will go ahead and share my screen here. Let's see. Slideshow. Everybody able to see that okay? Cool. All right. Um, looks like one more person. We can go and get started since it's recorded. Um, anybody misses it, they can watch the recording. So to kick things off, my name's Albert. I'm the West Coast Partnerships person for retention. Um, been at retention for four months, five months now-ish. Um, I come from e-commerce though, so I've been in e-com for like 10 plus years. I've worked agency, I've worked at tech companies, I've worked at brand as well. So sat on different seats, worn different hats, um, kind of familiar with probably the struggles that you all have. So hopefully I can speak to some of that stuff a little bit more relatably. But uh, I guess first question is, has anyone on this call or does anybody know retention.com? I'm just trying to gauge Okay. A couple people. Great. All right. So I won't go through this entire deck. Uh, I will share it after the call. Um, and then you can look at some of the other slides because it is kind of long, but I'll hit kind of the main points, hopefully. And then we can have some conversations or you can ask questions. Feel free to stop me at any time because I can talk forever. Um, so a little bit about retention.com. What we are at our core, we are identity resolution. So what we do is we help brands identify anonymous website visitors and then provide some of that identity back to the brand so that they can remarket to those folks. As you all know today, very, very competitive, you know, um, in the digital marketing space um, with changes to cookies, all these things, it's been very, very challenging for a lot of brands. Not like the old days where you could just spin up a brand, put ads on Facebook, you know, become a big thing. Now, brands are spending all this money to acquire customers and you know a lot of those customers sometimes just take a look at a couple pages maybe look at a product and then leave without leaving their email information or signing up for you know an account all these things so where retention comes in is we can help salvage some of those visitors and i'll talk you through a little bit more in depth how we do it but essentially we can help brands you know kind of retain some of those customers that have visited the website so we're not selling there's some misconceptions about retention i'm sure we're not like purchasing shady email lists and then using that and like distributing it to customers if we were we probably wouldn't have all these brands and we'd probably be out of business by now but uh we can talk through some of those things so the three key kind of solutions that we offer um, to go a little bit more specifically we help improve list growth so we have a product called Grow, and that basically helps you know do some of the things I mentioned, which is identify anonymous visitors who didn't do anything. And then we can provide some of those emails back to the brand. Then the brand creates a modified welcome series. So they create a duplicate of it, modify it, and then we will send a different audience into that welcome series. So two reasons we do that. One, separate you know what the brand has been doing on their own, because we're not trying to take credit for what they've done organically. And then two, you can see clear ROI uh, attribution, right? So the flows will be completely separate. We calculate our ROI off of the flows that we're pushing identities into. Second product called Reclaim. So this is basically think of like device ID stitching, right? So if me, Albert, I usually purchase at home on my desktop PC, but then I'm out and I use you know my phone to add products to cart and then I forget. Clavio or other ESPs cannot identify me on both those devices unless I purchased on both or logged in on both or done something to get cookied on both. So what retention can do is kind of just tell the ESP, this is also Albert. So then you can increase the amount of abandonment emails that you're sending. And we all know the abandonment emails generally perform really well for brands. So the more you send, the more money you kind of generate from that. Last thing, uh, meta audiences. So this is something that we've been doing kind of recently. 
Um, so what we can do is take all of our audience data and then push that straight into Meta. And then you can create retargeting campaigns around actual people who visited the website rather than depending on you know Meta's algorithm for like lookalike audiences. And so we've seen a lot of really good success um, using our Meta Audiences tool. So you can imagine some brands nowadays like ROAS is maybe, I don't know, three-ish. With our Meta Audiences, we've seen some go from 5X to 9X uh, from retargeting campaigns specifically. Go ahead. So have a question. And that's mainly just from results from custom audiences. I mean, do you see like decent performance from creating lookalikes based off of those uh, lists there? So the beauty is that we actually can, you know, provide you actual people that visit the website. So you don't need the lookalikes. You can actually retarget whoever is on that list that Meta identifies on Instagram, Facebook, whatever. Um, so like. Example is like if you have a customer, a client, and they use retention over the course of like six months, let's say they gather a list of like 100,000 visitors, hypothetically, you could upload that 100,000 list and then retarget those 100,000 people specifically rather than trying to build lookalikes around them. Got you. And that uh, is a direct integration or that be like an export upload type deal? I believe we have an integration, so it could be pushes straight to Meta that you can, you know, push those audiences. Nice. But the retention, yep, the retention platform itself, we can export all of the identities as well. So if you wanted to use them for some other purpose, you could definitely go into retentions backend and then export the list of all the identities we've provided. Sweet, excellent. Yep. Um, all right, so a little bit more, you know. Um, color around some of our products. You can see here, there's the three products. Um, without retention, three to 5% of traffic uh, are probably logged in. To be generous, you know, Shopify claims, I think it's like 15%. So let's just give it the benefit of the doubt. That's still, you know, 85% of folks that like most brands don't know who those folks are when they're visiting their websites. So using retention and using all of our tools, you can increase that identification rate up to 80%. Um, and I'll talk you through a little bit here. Uh, let me skip ahead a couple slides. Um, oh, well, let's talk about this one. So we get asked this a lot, and I'm sure you will get asked this a lot, is like, how is this legal? Like, how can you email somebody if they never gave you their email address? So in America, we are a more entrepreneurial country than most. So we are an opt-out country and not an opt-in. So if you think about GDPR in other countries, opt-in specifically means that somebody has to give you consent for you to email them. Whereas in America, you can email anyone as long as you give them the opportunity to say, do not email me or unsubscribe. With most modern day ESPs, they bake those into the templates. So generally you're okay. Um, but it is 100% legal in the United States, I think, a lot of people, you know, adopt the GDPR policy just to be safe and then, you know, blanket apply that to the United States. Any questions on this piece? Because we have a ton of information too. And um, after the call, I can also drop a link. We've had lawyers go through a bunch of stuff and it's on our website. So if there's resources there for folks, if, you know, you do run into a client that kind of asks you about the legalities, um, or any issues like that. Cool, so how it kind of works at a more granular level. So you can see here on the far left, this is your customer's site traffic at 100%. Retention.com can identify up to 80% of the visitors hitting that website. From there, we do a couple of different things. Uh, one, we will cross check their existing databases to make sure that they're not already registered as a user in like their email or SMS. If they're already registered, great, we don't do anything from there. If they're not registered, then we go through a series of filters to make sure that we're providing high quality emails that are relevant to the brand. So we check for compliance, making sure that they're um, US based, so we geofence for that. Second, we make sure they're not already on an unsubscribe or do not email list. Third, we check to make sure they're not a honeypot or a spam bot. And then last, we check for activity. So we make sure that the email has had activity within the past seven days. 
And you can see here, if it meets all this criteria, then we provide those emails back to the brand. So from that 80%, we get down to around 25%. The reason for that is, like I said, we're trying to target lower funnel um, activity to you know, generate those emails and then provide them to the brand so that the you know communication doesn't seem weird. So give me an example, if like you go to a website and you look at their homepage for like three seconds and then you leave, then later you get an email, you might feel a little, you know, certain kind of way about that. But if you went to that same website, looked at a bunch of products, maybe added one to cart and then left, the intent there is very different. And we've seen that, you know, uh, unsubscribes, spam, complaints, all that stuff is very low when you have that second scenario. And so we do this to protect the brands because obviously you could put it on your homepage and collect everybody you know that hits that, um, but that definitely increases the chances of those you know unsubscribe spans, etc. Cool. So pricing, uh, we'll talk through a little bit about pricing. So you can see here we've got kind of three main plans that we now sell. Um, I don't know if any of you had a previous call with Megan, but we you know, had a different pricing model not too long ago. But I think we've scaled it down to make it more simple. You can see here, basically, it's based on the site traffic of your customer. So for startup plans, it's for brands with up to 75,000 unique visits a month. For the pro plan, it's 75 to 200,000. Scale is 200,000 to 300,000. And then we do have a custom pricing. So if they're above 300,000, it's kind of up to the AE to figure out with the brand, like what makes sense for them. But generally you can see here, uh, based on that traffic, the reason why um, we're priced that way is because the number of identities we provide to per, per month to the brand, right? So you can see here, this 3000 monthly grow credits, 7,500, 20,000. And that's kind of that 25% from that you know graph that I was showing you. So when the traffic hits the site, we're providing for these brands because they've got this many unique visits up to 3,000 you know, net new customers per month, um, along with these other sort of additional features in each bucket. One really big call out is that you'll see here, we have 60 day opt outs for all of our contracts. And what that means is think of it as a 12 month commitment with a 60 day opt out. Um, the reason we do that is for two reasons. One, we want the brands to see the ROI. So we want them to feel good about their investment. We want them to see, you know, that it's working. So we give them that 60 day opt out. Not a lot of tech companies actually do this, you know, as a standard. I'm sure some you can negotiate, but for us, it's a standard across all of our contracts because we want to put our money where our mouth is and we feel like it'll be successful. And this is a one way of doing that. The second reason is because we want to make it easier for our partners like you guys to have these conversations with your clients where it's a little bit less risk and it feels less salesy. I know oftentimes, you know, to the, these brands get pitched a lot of different things from a lot of different people, but you know, they look at you as their sort of like consultant or advisor. So when you have that conversation, it's not so salesy where it's like, Hey, you should buy this thing. It's more like we met these people and it sounds like it works, works for a lot of brands. Um, there's a 60 day trial, like sort of opt out period. So you can try it. If you don't like it, you can walk away. There's no gotcha clauses. There's no early termination fees. You know, it's really a 60 day opt out. So on day 59, they could tell us they don't want to continue and they can walk away from the contract. Any questions? No. I have a okay. question. Sure. Um, so would you say that, or what's the percentage of um, success you guys have with most people that sign on? Are people actually seeing results in that 60 days? Um, is it like a 90 day thing? Uh, how is that going for you guys? Great question. Um, and so the reason why we chose 60 days is because that's kind of the lowest common denominator. Um, if you're in this startup bucket, it can take up to 60 days to kind of like see ROI. Um, but if you're in sort of the pro or scale, generally you should see ROI within days to weeks, because okay. once you get the script up, it starts to collect. And then once the emails start firing, you'll see revenue start to generate pretty much like day of or the next day, these types of things for the larger brands. 
with the smaller brands, it's a little bit more challenging because sometimes, you know, they don't have as big of a list or they don't send as much emails or traffic is not as high, you know, AOV is lower. These There's a lot of variables in there that kind of affect why, but that's kind of why we chose 60 days. Okay. Um, and we can extend that too. So if you have some customers that want, you know, a longer period, they can work with our sales reps and we can, we've, I've definitely seen like 90 day opt outs for some contracts as well. Okay. Thank yeah, you. Great question though. Mm -hmm. Cool. So, um, one of our, you know, kind of marquee clients is Dr. Squatch. I don't know if you've all heard of it, but they basically make like soap and, you know, like bath products kind of driven towards men. Um, and you can see here we delivered 50 X ROI and that is not like marketing kind of bullshit number. The reason why it's 50 X is because, um, yeah, there you go. Uh, the reason why it's 50X is because our costs are fixed. So as you saw our plans there, there's no scaling costs. There's no additional fees. If you, you know, do a certain amount of revenue or do a certain amount of traffic, it's a fixed kind of cost. So with Dr. Squatch, they were able to implement us before last holiday. And I think they generated like a million dollars in incremental revenue using retention.com. I believe they are currently only US only, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, but there's a little bit of a mini case study here for Dr. Squatch that you can all take a look at. You can see, you know, kind of the thing that we did for them. We also have a great testimonial, um, from Cody, who was the VP of Dr. Squatch. Um, and I'll share this after so you can see, but it's a really good snippet. It's like two minutes, which is, you know, kind of digestible. Um, and he talks through kind of the three phases. So the first phase was concerns that they had about using retention for deliverability, all these things. Second was then their sort of rationale and then reasoning behind why they went forward. And then third was like the results from it. So if this is kind of a good sales tool to send to, you know, any of the customers that you're talking to that might be interested. Um, and they can kind of watch this and see it from somebody, you know, that's kind of like their peer. So at this stage we're at over 3000 commerce brands and growing uh, you can see a bunch more on this slide we also have we're building out a library of case studies for different types of verticals so while you know everybody can enjoy dr squatch's story not every brand is like that big right and is going to see the same success so what we're trying to do is build a library of case studies for more of those mid-market sized brands so that brands can look for brands that they identify with and say, oh, okay, like I know them or they're kind of like us or the same size as us. And then that helps build more confidence that it's not just for, you know, large brands that you see here. I can tell you, we have a ton of like brands that you've probably maybe heard of um, that, you know, do relatively decent revenue and have still really good ROIs like using retention.com. So personal friend of mine, she has like a jewelry company on Shopify. She, you know, was convinced to use it. And she's been getting, I think, like a 5x return using retention.com. So and to kind of reinforce that you can see here, we have like more slides. Um, if you need like different examples in different verticals, you can see here health and wellness. Uh, we've got beauty brands, home accessories, accessories, etc. So we're building out, you know, more kind of like verticalized um, case studies. So question in the chat was uh, any B2B examples, we can work with B2B companies, I will caveat that we've learned, because we used to work with like quite a few B2B companies. The challenge there is that the ROI calculation is not always easily done. Because with a B2B company, let's say they are generating leads or appointments. As an example, what is a lead worth? What is an example, you know, what is an appointment worth? Um, and sometimes it's not easy to come to an agreement on what that is with, you know, particular brand. So we can definitely work with them. I would just say it probably requires a little bit more sort of uh, expectation alignment in the beginning to make sure that they understand, you know, what the workflow is and what the justification of ROI is because, you know, we do still work with some B2B, but I think it's something that we kind of pivoted a little bit away from because it was just, you know, a difficult conversation with a lot of those folks. 
Cool. Any questions, comments, concerns? Uh, Dr. Squatch is one of my favorite advertisers on the in the game. So nice to hear you guys are linking up with them. Yeah, they got they got good humor and really good targeting. Because I know uh, I can certainly use their products. Yeah, I mean, I know they uh, they have a very specific aesthetic, and like their commercials are very funny with the Sasquatch and all that stuff. So also, I need you to tell True Classics to chill out on calling me fat because it's like all the time, and I don't know what type of targeting <laughs> they arrive to get there, but I have a feeling it's you guys. So stop doing that. <laughs> hey, we actually cannot control what they put in the email content, but I will deliver you guys that. Have, like weight in your demographic targeting. Like, what's going on here? It's like we it's do not. So, <laughs> <laughs> but that's uh, that's kind of an interesting thing. Um, all right. So, fashion apparel, food and beverage, um, and then we have a bunch more slides in here about like you know onboarding and the first ninety days, things like that. I don't think it's necessary to go through all of those things with this audience. So, I will drop the Uber Eats. Um, link again because I think we had a couple of folks join late. So it's good until Saturday morning. Um, feel free to order lunch or something or drinks, whatever you're into. No judgments on our end. Um, all right. So I will ask two questions, and the people who get those questions right will get an Amazon gift card for $100 each. So, first question. Why is it legal in the U.S.? Julian. It is a opt-out, not an opt-in country. You got it. He didn't even ask 100% legal. <laughs> I'm trying to make it easy. I'm trying to make it easy, guys. It's, a, yeah. it's Thursday. We're almost at Friday. So, all right, Julian, oh, Julian I will get your... Stuff, man. Go. <laughs> I will get your email and send you the gift card after this call. Um... All right, and then second question. Let me think of a question here. I'm about to Jeopardy ring. As soon as like the question gets to brother, regardless or not, I know the answer. I'm hitting the button. Raise your hand right, right <laughs> away. I feel like that's what Julian just did. Like, what's going on here? I know. That's what he I did. wasn't I was ready. I didn't even hit question first. I didn't hit it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, what are our three main products, and what do they kind of solve? So it's a little bit harder. So I may help you guys out a little bit. I'm AFK. Best of luck, guys. I'm sitting this one out. Nobody? Put it I put it on the screen, so I got it. <laughs> All right. Let's do it. Can you ask the question again? <laughs> what are our three main products and what do they do? Um the they uh you got the email list growth that grows email lists um yep. you got the abandonment revenues um and the meta persistent audiences there you go see boom boom so, so I, I have a, I have a question um sure. so people are using this in addition, I joined like 10 minutes late, so I don't know what I missed. No, 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 10 no. minutes, but people are using this in addition to um, their other email sequences. This is just like a retargeting type of email sequence. Um, so are they rem like, how does that work as far as the actual messages that people are, that they're sending out? Yeah, good question. So this is more of a think of it as a complementary technology to your ESP. So okay. let's use Klaviyo as the example, right? Mm -hmm. So your brand already has all this stuff in Klaviyo, like their welcome series, abandoned card, abandoned views, whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, what we actually do is we help enhance some of those flows by uh, creating um, additional audiences um, that they didn't capture. So think of it as like brands already doing what they're doing. Mm -hmm. We're helping them capture people that they lost, essentially. So Visitors who visited the website didn't, you know, leave an email, didn't create an account, didn't purchase these types of folks. We can then help sort of salvage some of them with what we do. And so 
when the brand sets up retention.com, they basically duplicate like their abandoned cart flow. They duplicate mm -hmm. their welcome series and whatever else they want to do. And then retention will push audiences, separate audiences into those duplicated flows. Gotcha. Yep. And okay. then they generate additional money that way. Okay. Okay. And, and is sense. it best for someone to already have like a, a large email list that they're working with? Um, or can you, what you what you do does it help people grow their email list then and yeah okay yep so um a lot of factors will come into it right so depending on how big the brand is how long they've been around how many emails they send today like these are all things that like our onboarding solutions team will kind of work through with them but like in general we do help them grow their list because we can capture more emails um and then they, you know, in some instances, we've seen that the list that we capture performs better than their organic lists that they've collected on their own. Um, same with like abandonment and same with, you know, meta. So we're seeing really good success with a lot of brands in terms of capturing people depending on the intent and then timely sort of emails to those folks, right? The part that we don't control, and this is probably where you all have some influence, if not control, is what emails to send, how often to send, you know, what is the content, what is the messaging, et cetera, right? We're just basically providing you the people mm -hmm. and then the brand is free to email them however frequently or infrequently they want. Gotcha. So with Black Friday coming up, it's like now yep. the time to join. It's like joining in November kind of a good time or I'm wondering when I should like pitch this to some of my e -com clients. No, perfect. You're thinking the, the right way. So the earlier, the better, because you could start collecting email addresses now and then hitting them Black Friday when Cyber Monday with, you know, promos and offers and things like that. If you watch the Dr. Squash video, that's kind of exactly what they talked about last holiday, yeah. which is like, how do we, you know, do something to make sure we're successful for holiday? And they looked at us and then they said, you know, let's give it a try. And that's how they generated, you know, a million incremental revenue because it's basically time, right? So over time, you gather more information, you gather more identities, and then your list gets bigger and bigger. So the sooner you do it, the better, unless right. you have, you know, just insane, you know, site traffic. How long have you guys been out? When, when did it start? Retention has been around three years, uh, oh. but our founders have been in the email space for like 10 years. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Um, any other any restricted industries no um we do not have any restrictions so we can work with firearms cbd you know anything that's on the naughty list as long as it's not illegal i think that's where we probably draw the line good to know cool your clients that are like just restricted in terms of those verticals they find uh your service pretty reliable I know that's like a big pain point. Yeah. Of mine. It's like, it's difficult. Yeah, to have a, we do have a. Analyst. So it's like, not like yep. I can coordinate the emails, you know, like, but still just having that list and getting uh, the appropriate person's hand would just be so clutch. Such a big disadvantage not being able to retarget for like guns and healthcare. For sure. Um, we do have a ton of like CBD clients, and I know it works really well for most of them because. Yeah. You know the concept um the concept in itself is pretty simple right we're just helping you retain more customers and that's why it's called retention.com right of course yep uh danielle i think you had a question yes so um you had mentioned retention's been around for like three years um i know mm -hmm. before that was get emails is that so was that like a rebrand or was it like an acquisition? And is that when you guys kind of shifted to e-commerce focus? Yeah, I think it's a combination of all the above. Um, definitely rebranded, I think. Get emails, I don't know how you all feel, but when I heard get emails, I interpreted it as kind of sus. So I feel like retention.com is a better name. And, um, you know, the product is slightly different then from what I understand, from what it used to be, because I know a lot of folks I've talked to at like events and things like that did try get emails and, you know, had varied experiences. 
And I think they changed the product a little bit as well as the branding. So it's a combination of all. And I think uh, it was for the better. Um, if you follow our CEO on LinkedIn, his name's Adam, Adam Robinson, and he has a bunch of very like interesting, he's calling it uh, building a unicorn in public. And so he's very, very outgoing and outspoken and transparent with like what's going on. So if you'll, I think there's an episode about why he moved to retention.com and also how much he paid for this domain. So how much, Sandra, you have a question? how much was the domain? Oof. Uh, we'll have to I go. Was, Don't tell me it's eight. It was six figures. It was six figures for sure. Yeah, baby. Let's go. Like almost seven figures. Cool. I was going to ask, could you remind us what the minimum amount of uh, site traffic you guys look for? Great question. Um, so if it's Shopify Clavio, I'm told we can do uh, 10,000 monthly site visits. Um, there you go. See, somebody found it already. Power of the internet. Um, if it's not on Shopify Clavio, I think we look for more around the 50,000 just because we have it really tightly integrated with Shopify and Clavio. Um, and that's why it works even with smaller site traffic, but on non Shopify, non Clavio, probably somewhere around the 50,000 monthly site visit range. We can work with smaller, but it just, you know, it gets riskier where, you know, the ROI may not be there. Cool. Any other questions, comments? Um, assuming you're going to save the sweet stuff for the end, but commission breakdown would be uh, definitely interesting. Yep. Uh, I can go back to pricing as well. So as a partnership, um, we do offer 20% referral fee to the agency. Obviously, um, that's probably not super exciting for everyone on this call. But what we do do is incent individuals as well. So for every introduction that you bring us and the demo gets booked, we do send the individual who you know introduced us a uh, $100 Amazon gift card as well. So we want to make sure we're taking care of the agency, but also you as individuals, because you're the ones out there, you know, talking to the customers about us. So the way that referrals work, all you have to do is basically email, you know, uh, intro us to your client um, and TC put Megan on the thread because she is your partner manager and then she can take it from there. She will tag all the stuff in Salesforce on our side and then get an AE looped in. Once a demo gets booked, generally we'll send the Amazon gift card. Albert, go over the commission part as well because uh, uh, the, the commission actually gets split 50-50. Uh, 50, 50. 50 goes to agency, 50% direct to the person. Oh, okay. Well, that I have not heard that and that's awesome. So. Yeah, so the 20%, basically, you see the, the contract values here. We pay 20% off of the monthly fee that the brand is paying to the agency. So if it's, you know, the pro plan, then they're paying 1000 agency gets 200 bucks a month. Um, that's automated. We have a portal that we've built. So all of your accounts for your agency will be under your account, and you can log into them from there. And then uh, referral payments and calculations also are visible in there as well and it's automated. So agency puts its bank information and then we pay out every month. I've referred a few to, to, to retention.com. I have a few clients on it actively. Um, they're all happy and, 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 and we've got the commission from it. Uh, Danielle is here. I know she referred a client to it, um, has been consistently nice. getting commission from it. Very cool. Um, you also do have your own affiliate like booking link. And I think that's what Cassandra dropped here. Um, so if you, let's say, don't want to do the email route, you could actually just have your customer book the demo directly. Um, and it gets attributed to you all. I will just say, you know, I used to have the same clients going to client. So, you know, you can't predict what a client's going to do sometimes. And if you do have conversations with them about retention.com, it's probably best to let Megan know just so that she can mark that in our back end because I've seen this happen a lot where you're on this call, you have a great conversation, everybody's hyped up about, you know, maybe doing retention and then the client will go and book a demo on the website. We won't know that until like maybe, you know, later on. Um, and then it becomes, you know, kind of complicated on our side and annoying to like 
you know, provide proof that you guys did the referral, blah, blah, blah. So it's always great if you guys do mention us or have conversations, it's not, uh, it doesn't hurt to just shoot us an email and say, oh, we had this chat with so-and-so today. You know, it seems like they might be interested and then we can tag it just in case. Yeah, client's gonna client is my new, it is what it is. Yep, and you know, agency life. <laughs> and amen. Awesome. Uh, any other questions, comments? Bang up presentation. Thank you. Um, I try to end it early because I know, you know, it's your lunchtime for some of you and I don't want to, you know, keep you from that. So thanks for the time. It was great to meet you all. And, you know, um, great questions, great participation. Julian and Ryan, I will owe you a Amazon gift card. So I'll send you that after this call. And if anyone else has any questions, comments, please feel free to reach out to Megan or myself. Thank you. Awesome. Congrats, thank you, winners, and thank you. Yes. Thank yep. you. Yeah. Thanks, thank guys, for putting this on as well. So. Alrighty. Have a good one. Have a good day. All right, see you guys. Have a good one. Thank y'all.